I'm Jacqueline, and I'm here because I'm an investigative journalist talking about Onision. Am I doing it? Am I doing the Chris Hansen thing? I watched the Onision documentary, so you don't have to. I'm gonna be straight up. I felt entertained at moments. But for the most part, it made me angry because there were so many massive parts to the story that were completely missing and things that were drastically misrepresented. Plus, Chris Hansen drives me absolutely nuts. Now listen, I know he's been on TV for a long time and kind of had this persona, but he carried it on throughout all of the interviews about Omision, held the same kind of stance, and now I understand it's because the entirety of that time he had plans to do bigger things with it that would really cash in for him. So who knows, maybe if I do the rest of my videos like this, I'll be successful or widely made fun of. Who knows? That's me, Chris Hansen. Chris Harrison. No, Chris Hansen. And not the wrong Chris Hansen that Onision took to court, the actual Chris Hansen. The only part of the entire thing that I thought was actually interesting was the part where they actually brought Onision's dad into the interview. I was not expecting that. That was actually pretty intense. Onision has multiple times throughout the past brought up his dad, brought up instances of his dad being abusive. The dad vehemently denied all of this. And it was really interesting too for the first time here the opposite perspective and how Onision potentially fabricated a lot about these stories. Which I'm just shocked. I'm so shocked that he would do because he is the honest most honest of YouTubers. I wanna get right into it and be fully transparent. I was contacted by Discovery Plus. Hi Jacqueline, my name is Blank and I am on the team at D Plus, which you might have heard is the streaming service that will air the Onision documentary. I know the production team contacted you. Actually, no, they didn't. I went through and looked to see if I missed something, which I don't think I would have missed it primarily, but I looked through and there's nothing. So maybe there's a mix up. Maybe you didn't mean to say that. Maybe you emailed the wrong person. I don't know, I didn't get anything. But now that the documentary is finished, I wanted to reach out as well. Since the story started on YouTube and was researched by YouTube, I want the YouTube community to see it first. Um, feelings on this. So the story was started on YouTube and researched by, okay, it wasn't researched by YouTube. Like YouTube headquarters was not like, we must look into Onision. Actually, they've been pretty silent on banning his channels and petitions and such that have been asking for them to do that for quite some time. They haven't really done it. Um, so YouTube, I don't think is the right label to you know create for all of the people that put hours and hours and tons of effort and frustration into making videos exposing this guy for you know what he is also sending it to me and a handful of other creators that have done commentary on onision isn't exactly the youtube community i mean it's just a few of us that happen to be creators on the platform but we are by no means the entirety of the community unless you upload this onto youtube for free you are not giving it to the YouTube community to see first. You're just not. Then they go on to ask me to make a commentary video about it, which I know they have asked other creators to do as well. Oh yes, I'll make a commentary video, but I don't think it's the one that you're gonna want me to make. I made a video before about Chris Hansen and my feelings on him and how he basically screwed everybody over. I don't know how y'all feel, but personally, I feel really stupid for ever having believed that he could do something. I mean, just like the rest of us, I feel like a lot of people grew up or had a bit of an understanding of Dateline and the type of content that he used to make. And because of that nostalgia, basically, we kind of thought he was more than what he was or could achieve more than what he could, primarily because he said that he could, didn't follow through, but he did say it. When in fact, I don't think that was his intention at all. During the entire thing, he was prepping for this. He was prepping to cash in on it. And all of us were putting our hope into somebody to do something. And all he did was gather the work that everybody else did, put it into a few interviews that he then sold. Discovery could have bypassed Chris Hansen entirely. He is not an integral part of the story at all. He came in at the last second, basically hijacked it, and then said it was his. So I don't understand why they couldn't have removed him from this. I do feel like if 
he weren't a part of this and people didn't feel taken advantage of basically by him, there might have been more willingness for actual involvement by the people who know what they're talking about, by the people who were involved, by the people who have been discussing Onision for years, people who know him personally. To me, that would have made for a much better documentary. But they didn't do that. Maybe it's because they made the same mistake I did and so many others did, thinking that Chris Hansen was just this integral part of the story, that you can't tell it without him because the the remembrance of him is so grandiose that of course we have to bring in the guy who catches the predators in a story about a pred like you know i get it that they could make that same mistake but in retrospect i think that they completely screwed up and the way they totally kiss his ass throughout this documentary makes me kind of want to puke i had exposed his predatory behavior and that's why he was hitting me back but he finally faced someone who'd been around a long time. Finally, I'm Chris Hansen with you. finally faced somebody oh. worthy. The way they present it is that Onision had simply just been existing blissfully on the platform. No negativity brought his way. He didn't, you know, have to face criticism or backlash from like every commentary channel. No, not until Chris Hansen entered the scene. Finally then he faced someone worthy. So here's me actually watching it. Uh, and I reacted to this next part and I was a little frustrated. I think when he joined YouTube in 2006, people were overwhelmingly supportive of him being on the platform. It wasn't until Chris Hansen's YouTube story that the um. overall dialogue started to change. Um, what? What? Not until Chris Hansen? You were kidding me. I don't know. I don't know, Nala. What are you recording? I don't know what's going on, Nala. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Not until Chris Hansen saved the day did any backlash fall upon Onision. Just goodness gracious, thank the Lord for Chris Hansen. I keep almost saying Chris Harrison, I'm so sorry. So this is the guy that was mainly behind everything. He got called a parasite by Onision in an interview some time ago and was upset about it. And listen, I have no issue with this guy telling a story. What I have issue with is the blatant disregard for where they're getting their information. All of this was wrapped up with a bow tie and served on a silver platter to these people by the work of everybody else on YouTube. So now they're reaching out to the very people that did that research, that did that work, and now they're asking them to promote this documentary for free. <laughs> Onision actually reacted to this documentary and I was pretty disappointed with it. I was really hoping that he would at least address the one worthy part of the documentary, which is a segment interviewing his dad, but his response to the documentary completely skips over that whole thing conveniently. And focuses mainly on the complaint that Creepshow Art brought up about not getting paid to promote this whatever you want to call it, because I have the same issue. So he was really pissed that she felt that she deserved to be paid for her work. Uh, along with other creators. But you know, it actually kind of boils down to the fact that he was butthurt, that he's not making any money off of all this and literally everybody else is. But that's kind of the story of it, right? It's been this way for a long time. Anybody who makes a video about Onision gets rewarded, but he can't make his own videos. It's a little bit funny at this point. And then his other complaint is about Edwin. And I'm gonna get into that a little bit too. Edwin, by the way, was in the Onision documentary didn't get paid, should have gotten paid, whatever, let's move on. So what you're saying is if they don't pay you to promote a show that talks about bogus hashtag me to fake victims, you're mad. You want money and you're mad at them for not paying you to promote it. That's literally what you're doing right now. No, literally what's going on is a company that has bank is making bank off of the work of other people and not offering anything in return. Hashtag me too fake victims. I want to make money off hashtag me too fake victims too. When He refers to everybody hurt as hashtag me too fake victims multiple times over, which is really classy. Yeah, you should be paid for the fake hashtag me too victim nonsense. You should make money off this, just like Chris Hansen made money off this. Well, everyone should make money off this except for Onion, right? <laughs> it's literally this entire rant led up to that being the last thing he said about it because he's literally just butthurt that everyone else is able to find success on his ridiculousness except for him. It's a sad, sad story for a sad, sad man. And he just can't take it. He can't stand the idea 
that he can make a video even about his own drama and it flops, but literally I think a new channel could start today, right now, and make videos about it and do infinitely better. But I am not kidding, there's a lot of money in this. When you open TikTok, the first thing I saw was an ad promoting Discovery Plus. The first thing on TikTok, that costs money. First thing you see on Twitter, you open it up, oh look what's trending at the very top. Discovery. They are putting a lot, a lot, a lot into promoting this thing. And to, to reach out to the very people that gave you the story, essentially, and not offer anything is just, it really does blow my mind and it feels kind of like a BuzzFeed-esque ripoff type of thing. Where a major corporation just comes in and shits on the little guy because they can and they have money. And it just bums me out too because this could have been huge. This Discovery Plus thing could have been a huge success if they didn't filter through someone like Chris Hansen that everyone was already upset with. If they actually worked with people in a way that respected all the hours and time and blood, sweat and tears they put into this, if they actually reached out and communicated, imagine that, communicating with the victims involved with this story and let them know what would be shown, what wouldn't be shown, there could have actually been some real success behind this and you could have actually had probably every single commentary channel out there pushing this thing, coming together as a community to really promote something that we all believed in. But this, it has so many issues with it that it's not doing anybody any good. And I'm gonna start to get into that now because Edwin was a big part of this documentary. And when I say big part, I mean that he's Probably, as far as I've seen in the first part, there's three parts to this, by the way. Let me know if you want me to, to comment on the next two when they come out. But there's three parts to this, and in the first part, Edwin was the only YouTuber actually involved, that actually gave an interview. So that's why I'm saying he's a big part of it, because he's played a bigger role in the documentary than anybody else. But it is confusing to me, because he has multiple times over expressed his frustration with not only Chris Hansen, but with Shiloh, who was a huge part of the documentary. And... You know, it's so difficult because I do see people criticizing him saying, okay, well, if you're going to criticize Shiloh or criticize Chris Hansen, then you are then somehow helping Onision because you disagree with the people that are trying to take Onision down. I want that to just cut that out right away because I don't think you have to agree with either side to not like the other side equally. Edwin has very openly had issues with Shiloh in the past. This is nothing new. Although in Onision's video response about all this, he tries to present it as it's some kind of new shocking information. Do I have permission to record this conversation? Yes, sir. I, I believe she was kind of abusing the platform, which, you know, she obviously got a big following from calling you out. And it's like, you know, that's fine and dandy to you re recollect and recall, uh, recall her experiences with you. But all of a sudden it started turning into something else and I don't trust her. <laughs> Edwin doesn't trust Shiloh. He has made no secret about this. Like I said, it's in a few different videos out there. But to me, it is odd to have him sitting, you know, basically side by side her in this documentary as far as clips go. If I were him, I would have insisted that my viewpoints on both Chris Hansen and Shiloh were made known in the documentary. So, I, I mean, I understand Discovery Plus not maybe wanting to do that because you don't want to have that much dissent in the same video whenever you're trying to achieve the goal of making Onision look bad, right? You don't want to have people discrediting each other along the way that are trying to make Onision look bad because it weakens the story. I get it. But then why include somebody who doesn't believe basically the main character in the documentary and not have that expressed. To me, that's a little shady. If they allowed him to express it, both his concerns with her and with Chris Hansen, I would feel a little differently. And if I were him, I would have refused to be in it without that being a part of it because without that key ingredient, it does change the vibe a lot in a way that is almost deceptive to people out there who don't know that he feels this way. So obviously, the, if there were things you want to talk about would be Hanson. Like, I wouldn't mind like giving that a little airspace because I mean, <sighs> I, I would like to talk about, make a video about him. But if you want to film there, I would, I would gladly support some of the points as well, you know, so. Edwin's Generation stating that he would support me making points against Chris Hansen. None of that really is surprising me. I don't think Onision is giving this grand reveal that he might think he's giving because Edwin's been very, very transparent about his feelings on these things. But I don't, I guess where the sketchiness comes into my mind is Discovery Plus 
not expressing those concerns that Edwin has and putting him next to somebody who he doesn't even trust without giving that any consideration at all in the story. To me, that's just very strange. So Discovery Plus either shouldn't have used him or should have used somebody who actually trusted what Shiloh said since she's the main voice. But maybe I shouldn't be asking why they would include certain things or not in this documentary because they're willing to include things like this. No one looked into that. You know, big bold letters. Maybe you should do that next time. Just throwing it out there. It's a little weird and embarrassing for you. But who knows? I'm not gonna rule this out yet. Maybe in episodes two and three they will allow Edwin to express his feelings on Shiloh and Chris Hansen. And who knows? Maybe beyond that they will allow some of the creators who have had a problem with Chris Hansen actually share their voice in some way or another. I mean, they took clips from people you know, the, even if they weren't Edwin actually participating in the documentary, they still did take clips from YouTubers. Without their permission, by the way, I did text Blair and ask her, hey, did you give them permission to use your clips? And she said, nope. Uh, so, you know, if you're gonna take clips from YouTubers and put it in this documentary, at least include the story, the whole story. Include the parts where people actually do have a problem with Chris Hansen. It's not over until it's over, so Discovery Plus I hope you prove me wrong. I hope you prove yourself to be a little bit more trustworthy in the future that you can actually include every perspective in the following few episodes. Because if you take the approach that Chris Hansen is this kind of hero, then nobody had a problem with Onision until our savior Chris Hansen came along. I mean, that's just flat out untrue. You're lying. There's a big story about this. There's a lot of perspectives about this. And to leave it out, how do you do that and really tell the story? I've also felt a little confused because there are a lot of girls that don't want their story out there at all. They don't want to be a part of this documentary, you know, and showing their face and having any of their clips used, or even at the baseline having their story told at all. I feel really confused on that as how they can proceed and actually give an accurate representation of the issues with Onision without talking about these stories. So I am interested to see how episodes two and three play out, if they leave this out entirely, or if they include it anyway. I don't know, they said they won't. I'll believe it when I don't see it. At the end of the day, what I think happened, and this is not an excuse, it's not an excuse for me, anybody else online, or Discovery Plus, but I do think Discovery Plus was a bit tricked by the story behind Chris Hansen, the nostalgia behind him, the way we've kind of built him up and what he can do in our head, and they were led by that emotion to believe that he was an integral part of the story, but I truly think had they bypassed him in some way, had they reached out to people, been more communicative, been more willing to work with people, this could have been a huge success. Backed with so much support, they would have been blown away. But they didn't approach it like that. I will say, I don't think time has run out. I know they're probably done filming and they're done with all that they have to do, but I don't think it's too late. You have episodes two and three left still. You can show the feelings people have about Chris Hansen. You can show the overall sentiment. You can be more willing to be communicative. You know, pause it. Continue it next year. Do it right. Because at the end of the day, it would be good for something like this to be successful. But the way they're doing it, they're actually taking steps back. They're making it more difficult for something to happen. It just feels like there's a lot of sketchiness behind a lot of it that I don't like. So please feel free to let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Uh, I, you know, feel free to express your opinion. Either way, I really am curious to hear. And again, if you want to hear what I have to say about parts two and three when they come out, let me know. I'm willing to do it. Obviously, I'm going to watch it because I feel like obligated to keep up with the story because it, it does hit a personal nerve with me. Make sure to like this video if you liked it. That kind of thing really does help videos do well. Subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Thank you so much to those of you who are supporting me on Patreon, patreon.com slash Jacqueline, and I will see you in the next video.